Learn why my philosophy teacher announced that he loves all Yankees fans, an ability that Jesus and Hitler had in common, and explore the potential that you have that could light up the world. Welcome to No Bow Tie, where we conquer emptiness and frustration, discover our uniqueness, and live with unrelenting joy. I'm John No Bow Tie Swoboda, author and musician. Today, we're going to talk about love, how to know it, how to get it, and how to give it. Be sure to subscribe. Desiring to be loved is the most common thing that we all share. You know, a neighborhood a gathering, a friendly compassion, um, tender-hearted intimacy, deep passion. We all want to be loved. We want to receive that kind of adoration that lets us know that somebody recognizes what's truly in us, that we're accepted, that our vulnerability is accepted, and that we feel safe with that person. We could we could give more of ourselves to them. But it's a sickening feeling when we don't feel love. It doesn't mean that you're not, but when you don't feel love, that's all that matters. It when you walk down the street and you have that emptiness, we all a lot of us went through this in COVID or the separation made us realize that we do have to reach out to get love from others, to feel that, that vibrancy that makes us feel so special and alive. It's a great feeling. When you lose that, it can cause feeling lost, alone, and worst of all, lonely. And loneliness is a disease unto itself. Loneliness it's only real to the person who is, in, who is entrapped in it. But when you connect with another and get that little spark of feeling recognized, of feeling loved, it can lift those spirits, it can lift that cloud away until perhaps it cycles back and becomes a pattern of thinking where your own struggles and your own challenges burden you down and you don't feel loved. So what do you do? When I was in college working on my bachelor's degree, I remember the, uh, well, I went into a philosophy class. The teacher was named Dr. Rourke. In one particular session, it was about the third class, he walks in and he strides to the front of the room. He said, I remember he sat down on the front of the desk so that he was really a part of this. He let everybody get quiet. He looked up and he said, I love you. And about two or three people kind of like said, mumbled, I, I love you too, as if it was a test, as if, as if it was some kind of connection test. And he said, no, you don't understand. He said, I don't need your permission to love you. I can love you if you are late. I can love you if you get great grades. I can love you if you're handsome, pretty, ugly, dark, white, black, green, purple, blue, or, and then I remember he said, and I can love you even if you are a Yankees fan. He said the, the decision to love is his alone. And so it was true also with compassion. He said, I can be compassionate to anybody. Have you, have you ever needed to know a person, to help them with something? Have you ever needed to know a child to help them learn to read? Have you needed to know somebody in the parking lot to see that they're struggling and that you could be compassionate and go over and give your compassion to them? The same is true with love. It is yours to give. And if you want to experience it, give it. Don't wait to receive it. Start by listening to another person, but truly listen. And then if you, if you can reach out to somebody with some kind of an act of kindness, but absolutely 100% do not expect reciprocation. That isn't what love is. Love is not, oh, I love you, don't you love me too? Love is, I love you. And it is a feeling that manifests in behaviors of kindness, honesty, compassion, and all of the things that, that build when you have that eye-to-eye -eye contact with that person and they know that there's a, an unspoken trust. It's a wonderful feeling, but when you give that away, 
you will feel that you have love in you and then you will no longer have that empty feeling that nobody's giving it back. You'll know that you're the one in possession of as much of it as you want to give. And chances are good that when you give it, somebody, some way, is going to reflect and they're going to give it back. Now, they may give it back in their own way, and you have to accept that. They may not give it back in the way that you want it, but they're going to give back a little piece of their heart to you. And when you accept that, you have started a wonderful cycle that you can build on of giving and receiving love. The great author Stephen Covey, in his book, he talks about how he was meeting with a client and the client wanted to talk to him about some personal issues. He said, my, my spouse, um, I used to just be madly in love with her and I've lost interest. I don't want to do things with her anymore. I really don't want to hear her talk. I'm not really interested in how her day is going and I don't see a future. And Stephen Covey simply said, well, love her. And he said, no, I don't think you understand. I'm telling you that I've lost interest. And he said, love her. And this went on back and forth. And he, he finally, he got a little frustrated and said, I think what I'm trying to tell you is I don't. And he said again, he said, love her. He said, please understand, love is a verb. Love is something that is in you that you can give. Listen to her. Listen to her heart. Find out why you've lost interest. Spend time with her, nurturing her ideas. Spend time letting her know that you're there for her, even in the smallest ways that are genuine. But start there. Start knowing that you once had a reason to become vulnerable to her and she had a reason to become vulnerable to you. Let her know that it's okay and you will start the process of love. Love her. And so, this will conclude one of the greatest lessons that I can share with you that we all inherently know. But because we live in a society where it's a reciprocal um, relationship society, I give you something, so give it to me. We often think that the feeling of love, when we, when we give it to another, it's something that we should receive back. And when we do, it's fantastic. Don't get me wrong. But it will not last. Love is something else. Love is the giving and receiving of that vulnerable space between two people. And it can be any two people. It can be a, an adult and a child. It can be you know, people that disagree can love each other. So take this lesson. It is a great experience to love another and know you're not expecting anything back. You will walk with pride. Now, once again, we've run out of time. We're going to continue on to next week. You don't want to miss next week's show. It's a bit of a surprise. So don't miss this one. You're going to be able to use this for life lessons to the end of time. And I'm going to leave you with a, a, a musical performance. Before you go, be sure to subscribe. Go to nobowtie.com slash life and get on there and be the first to get these episodes. They're wonderful. They're inspiring. And I love sharing them with you. Uh -huh.